of my history-loving friends, this is a very wind-blown Madam Morbid. I'm your guide on any number of historical adventures, and right now I'm in Joplin, Missouri at a, um, a memorial to the victims of the horrible F5 tornado that hit here in 2011, I think is what year it hit. And so I'm just gonna go and take a look at this memorial. It is extremely windy and extremely cold. The site of this memorial is located right where this tornado was at its strongest. It had only been on the ground about five minutes when it hit this area right here. It first touched the ground just east of the Missouri and Kansas state line, half a mile southwest of the intersection of South Central City Road and 32nd Street at 534. They started to see multiple vortices rotating around this parent tornado. Several large trees were knocked down as it went from an EF0. And of course, by the time it hit Joplin, it was like an F4. Sirens first sounded in Joplin 20 minutes before it struck. I've lived in Missouri my entire life, and we have tornadoes here, but we also are used to the sirens going off and then nothing ever happening. People get complacent. The sirens go off and either you just don't do anything or you run out on the front porch to go see the tornado if, in case there is one out there. And unfortunately, a lot of the people in Joplin handled it that way in 2011. It's moving east northeast. It turned to an, an F1, going through all of these rural areas, and it's widening as it goes. By the time it got near the Twin Hills Country Club, it was an F3, and it kept into another subdivision east of Iron Gates Road. It reaches F4 before crossing Schiffendecker Avenue. It's massive. It's shaped like a wedge, and at 538, it's now doing F4 damage. It's only been on the ground for four minutes. East of South Schiffendecker and through most of the rest of it going through Joplin, it's doing EF4 and EF5 damage, just flattening homes, businesses. Now the medical center, the main frame of the building stayed intact, but because every single window in the building was destroyed, it just, all the debris went inside and the rain and it just destroyed all the walls, the ceilings, everything on the inside of the building. And it was not salvageable. 14 people died in the hospital. Four of them were ICU patients who died because the ventilators that were keeping them alive no longer had any power. When they rebuilt the hospital now, all of that extra power is underground because what happened is the backup generator was in another building near the hospital that also was completely wiped away. A semi-truck in the parking lot of the hospital was picked up. It was thrown 125 yards and wrapped completely around a tree. X-rays, medical records, dental records were found in Green and Polk counties many, many miles away. It crossed Main Street, still at an F5 strength, and went between 20th and 26th Street, damaging every single business along that stretch, and it just destroyed entire neighborhoods. Any tree still standing was stripped completely of its bark. There were several people who never found their vehicle ever again. Greenbrier Nursing Home, 21 residents of that facility died. It destroyed several large apartments buildings, a Dillon's grocery store, a bank. The only thing left at the bank was the concrete safety deposit box vault and a wooden two by four that was found speared completely through a concrete curb. Luckily, no one was at the high school. The high school was flattened. Graduation ceremonies had been held three miles away at the Missouri Southern State University and had just gotten over right before this hit. They found cardboard embedded in stucco walls at the high school. Steel beams and pieces of fence were embedded into the ground in fields near the high school. Steel fence posts were bent to the ground in the opposite direction, and they found a school bus thrown into a nearby bus garage. It then approached Range Line Road and hit more neighborhoods along 20th Street. It continues at F5 as it crosses Range Line. It goes between 13th and 32nd Street, it hit a Pizza Hut at 1901 South Range Line. Four employees and 15 customers went into the walk-in freezer 
They had difficulty closing the door, so it was wrapped with a bungee cord to hold it completely shut. And he, and the manager, his name was Christopher Lucas, he had that around his arm, trying to hold this door closed. Sadly, he was sucked out and was one of the fatalities, but what a hero. It destroyed a Walmart supercenter. Businesses, restaurants, uh, they were just flattened. I mean, it scoured asphalt off the ground at the academy sports on range line they got pretty major damage but one of the weird things is they found a chair impaled legs first through one of their exterior walls along the streets manhold covers were removed and thrown into the air hundreds of yards away these weigh a hundred pounds experts say for manhole covers to be removed and thrown like this the winds had to have been in excess of 200 miles an hour which is what makes it an f5 and this is this area right through here is where a lot of the fatalities occurred it went on to Duquesne road in southeast joplin flattening all of the buildings in this area almost every building it touched there were metal warehouse structures that were just wiped from their foundations. The last time it did EF5 damage was in the industrial park and at a fast trip gas station. And as it leaves that area, it goes down to more of an F3 to F4. And this is where it hits East Middle School. And you're going to see footage of the that school being hit right here. As it passed the school toward I-44, where it is starting to weaken, but it is still blowing cars off of the highway and mangling them near exit 11. Now that is the I-49 interchange. By the time it hit that area, it was at an F2 and F3, and it headed into rural areas of Jasper and Northeast Newton County, where the damage was more minor to moderate. At 620, it finally lifted off the ground near Diamond. Initially, they thought the tornado was an F4, but after studying the damage and the scope of it, it was upgraded to an F5 rating. In total, 7,964 buildings were damaged. 7,400 were residential. 3,734 of those were considered damaged beyond repair. All of the 553 non-residential buildings were a loss. 20,000 people didn't have power right after the storm, and it would be 10 to 12 days until people got power back. It cost $25.7 million to fix Joplin's electricity. Water service was interrupted. There were 4,000 leaks in the water service lines for the whole city, so everyone had to boil their water for five and a half days. Only one hospital survived in Joplin so all of these hurt people are going to have to go to this one hospital I'm sure Springfield had to take in a lot of those patients as well I mean it knocked out cell towers fiber cables text messages leaving voicemails just making calls in general mobile companies had to bring out temporary cell towers in order to bring that back 54 percent of people were were killed in their homes. 32% would have been in non-residential areas like businesses. 14% were either outside or in their car. No one who had a basement in their home died in this tornado. Only 28% of Joplin new homes have basements. Two decades before that, it was 38%. So they're building fewer basements than they used to. 158 people were killed immediately by the tornado. Eight more died afterwards. Sadly, many were afflicted by a rare fungal infection that took several more lives and caused misery to others. The F5 tornado that hit Joplin was absolutely devastating. It, to this day, it still has not been surpassed in terms of the cost of the property damage. An estimated $2.6 billion worth of damage was done in Joplin. Okay, so there are four stations, basically like four stations of grief as you walk through this memorial. This is the, the front door, representative of the front door. This is like the fragmenting of the shattered lives 
Uh, I think normally water comes out of this, but it's off now because it's really cold. Of course, all of these skeletal houses are like the, the, the homes that are gone, that were lost. This area right here, the tornado hit and was at its strongest point right here. It hit this point at 541, seven minutes into the 38 minutes this was on the ground. I don't know if this is what they were going for, but that looks like a storm shelter right there. I just want people to remember that we, Joplin, are strong, said Roger Carnish. Each of these slabs represents a minute that it was on the ground. And at 541, there's a gap for when it hit this area right here. This bench here is a place for reflection. Uh, normally there's a journal here for people to write down their memories. It is not there. I hope it has not been stolen by somebody. I wanted to tell you some of these butterfly stories that came out of this, the butterfly people. These stories started to come out immediately after the tornado was over. Stories of butterflies, butterfly people or angels that protected children from the storm. The stories were many and miraculous, but very believable when set against the backdrop of the fifth devastation. Here are they share three. A father laid on top of his daughter in the yard, grasping at the grass to keep them both down. His shoes were pulled from his feet, but when the storm lifted and they were both unharmed, his daughter simply said, Daddy, it was okay. A butterfly was holding us down. A young girl was lifted into the air by the storm, but a butterfly quickly wrapped its wings around her and brought her safely to the ground. And without a scratch, a child in a car seat emerged from a car filled with glass and debris. When safe from the wreckage, the child described a butterfly wrapping its wings around him, protecting and making him feel safe. Off in the distance, you can see a chapel and a cross. That is where the hospital stood and the hospital was completely devastated and destroyed by the tornado. So just seeing here and how far away that is, you can see how wide this tornado was. Just this whole area where I'm standing, this was all tornado, inside the tornado. It's unbelievable. Okay, we're gonna go down here. This is a to the 126,000 volunteers. There actually would have been way more than that because that is only the registered volunteers. I know so many people personally who came here to help 
from everything to rescuing people, recovering, recovery, rebuilding, chopping trees. I mean, they needed help with pretty much everything. And people were coming from other states to come help. It was in the 50s when this day started, so, oh, it's definitely in the 30s now. Okay, this is the mosaic. So this is about putting the pieces back together. What was broken is now being reassembled. It says, at 5.41 p.m. on May 22, 2011, an EF-5 tornado ripped through Cunningham Park and the greater Joplin area, leaving a path of death and destruction one mile wide by six miles long. Over 160 people perished. What immediately followed in the staggering numbers and through personal accounts is the miracle of the human spirit which symbolizes the outpouring of volunteers who lifted Joplin out of the rubble. Volunteers from all walks of life who offered themselves to the effort without request, serving as a reminder of the overwhelming power of human generosity and the steadfast tenacity to rebuild the once broken city. This tribute embodies the volunteers' determination through four rippling garden walls representing Joplin's ongoing rescue, recovery, demolition, and rebirth. Several elements within the tribute, bronzed artifacts, a mosaic of remnants, a volunteer statue, and the emblematic wristband represent the volunteers' unprecedented response. Joplin and its residents are eternally grateful to those heroes. Thank you.